listening and learning. When they arrived at the dock, Bug stepped out of the cab. Then Auntie Vi came tumbling out, just like a ball of rags. Whilst trying to compose herself, her clothes in disarray, the giggling driver waited until Auntie Vi did pay. Have a good journey now, won't ye? He said with great aplomb. Let me know if you'll be needing a lift back before driving on. Buck hardly could contain himself from laughing out loud. He'd managed to stifle his laughter, which made him kind of proud. Auntie Vi now squeaked away in welly bobs that were too big at least, by three sizes, so squeak squeaking did incur. Having first straightened up her back, and then, like builders do, swung her bag like a sack of sand onto her shoulder too. Inhaling deeply, she admired the peaceful view ahead. Then, hearing steps upon the gravel driveway, somebody said, Hello, I'm Frances McFrugal, your fisherman's friend, I see. So pleased that you could come and join us on this sunny day. Ah, thanks, Alba replied to him. Then, nervously, she asked, You're never too old to learn, are you? I think I'll be the judge of that, ma'am, McFrugal replied, lifting her heavy bags, raised eyebrows too. Follow me, my dear, he called to her, then showed them both around. Have you fished before, young man, he did inquire. I've always wanted to, but I haven't yet, Bug sighed. Like a duck to water, you're cheeky, I'm sure. After a short trek around the docks, the fishing trout shop too, and the little cosy cafe, Vi and Bug then drew into the lodge where they relaxed and took time to read the itinerary plan for them, which they enjoyed indeed. It all appeared straightforward now, if the weather stayed calm. Bright powder blue skies greeted them just like a kind of balm. The same colour of eyeshadow surrounded Aunt Vi's eyes, just like a blue-eyed panda, Bug thought. That's no surprise. Bug averted his attention from Aunt Vi's face, for fear he might laugh at his thoughts he felt were a disgrace. He soon became embroiled in gazing at the tranquil lock, where boats were moored and birds swooped down and water lapped on rock. The vista even calmed Auntie Vi's jumpy nature too, making her feel that there were things that she could surely do. They both started to feel that with nature, they were becoming one, so side by side they watched and waited for the setting sun. On day two, and ready to listen, Auntie Vi and her waders stood by. Francis was showing Vi, Bug and two others how to attach hooks onto lines. He then demonstrated the method of casting from beside the lock's rugged shore, till a volunteer student from the local school was passing, was shouting galore. Not being happy about this interruption, Francis called out, Young man, come here! I'm trying to teach and you disturb the fish. Yes, your shouting fills the air with great fear. You come here to learn and I find it is clear that life's full of doers and do-nots. I'm a doer and you're a do-not. If you want to shout, find a fresh spot. The boy skulked away with his tail between his legs and didn't say a word for a week. Well, almost that is until he needed help in an incident, for now we'll keep. As you will find out in chapter to come, in an incident we will reveal. Both Bug and Auntie Vi, they were involved. Finding out for you will be a treat. <laughs>